What's up my Satsars, I'm Michael Princhek and in this video I'm going to walk you through how to perform a one sample Z test for a population proportion. I'm going to present to you a problem and we're going to pretend that this problem is on the free response section of the AP statistics exam. We're going to go through all of the different sections and parts that you need to get full credit on this question if it was on the AP exam. But what I'm actually going to show you how to do is how to use your NumWorks calculator to do all of the hard work for you. That way you can move through the problem faster and more accurately. Now the TI-84 calculator could do all of this stuff too, but it's not as well user friendly and pretty. The NumWorks calculator makes it so awesome. I'm about to prove that to you in this problem. All right, let's start off by taking a look at this document right here. This is a document that I made called a reference sheet, a format sheet, a cheat sheet, whatever you want to call it. But it basically walks you through exactly what is required of you to perform a one sample Z test for a population proportion. Now, if you want access to this document and a lot of other documents like it, one for t-test, z-test, two sample t-test, two sample z-interval, all that fun stuff, head on over to the ultimate review packet for AP statistics. You can log in with a free trial and at the very, very top, there's a link for all these different types of formula sheets and reference sheets that you could utilize to prepare for the AP exam and also to prepare for unit tests that you may have in class. Now, at the top of this document, the first thing you're going to see is, you know, what is a test? A test is basically when we know the true population proportion, or we at least know the thought to be true population proportion, and we want to use a sample proportion to test and see if that population proportion is still true. Maybe it's actually less, maybe it's greater, or maybe it's just something different. And you got to read the problem to know what we're talking about. Then you're going to see a section that talks about exactly what you need to conduct a one sample Z test for a population proportion. You're going to need P sub zero. Now P sub zero is the thought to be true population proportion that we're testing in the problem. Then you're going to need your sample size and your sample proportion, or you're going to need X, how many people in the sample were successful for whatever it is you're looking for. And the other thing you're going to need is a given significance level. Typically it's going to be five or 1%, but if you're not given, well then actually you could use either one you want. All right, let's start taking a look at the individual steps that we're going to need to solve this problem right here. All right, so here's the problem. Past data has shown that 62% of children under the age of 10 drink at least one glass of milk per day. However, the milk industry feels that the proportion has lessened. A popular milk distributor conducted a random sample of 325 children under the age of 10 and found that 48% of them drink at least one glass of milk per day. Is there significant evidence at the 1% level to suggest a smaller proportion of children under the age of 10 who drink at least one glass of milk per day? All right, so as I mentioned, we have a thought to be true population proportion of 62%, and we have this theory, this belief that maybe it's lessened. So what are the values that we need to actually conduct the test? As I mentioned, we need P sub zero. P sub zero is going to be our thought to be true population proportion, and that is 62%. The next thing we need is our sample size. That's 325 children under the age of 10. And then we need P hat. What was our sample proportion? Now our sample proportion was 0.48. Now when we're going to use our calculator, oftentimes you're going to ask for X. And that's going to be how many kids in the sample said, yes, I drink at least one glass of milk. So this is basically the number of successes. So to get that, we're going to take 325 times 0.48. And if we do this math, sometimes you'll get a decimal, no big deal. And the calculator does want you to round to the nearest whole number, but it ends up, this is a perfect 156. Now we actually don't need that number in our math as long as we have our P hat, but we will need that number when we go to our calculator. All right, so let's walk you through the, I called four steps on the AP exam. They use three sections, but as long as you follow my four steps, it's all there. All right, the first step is to name the test in context and give the hypotheses. All right, this is all outlined on that formula slash cheat sheet slash resource guide I was telling you about. So what we want to do here is we want to say this is a one sample Z test for P. Now we're actually defining what P is in context to this problem. The proportion of children under the age of 10 that drink at least one glass of milk. So again, two really important things you got to have there is the name of the test and then you're defining what P is in context. All right, next up, we're going to need the hypotheses. So the null hypothesis is that, hey, everything's status quo. Our population proportion equals that thought to be true population proportion of 62%. And the alternative is what we're wondering, and that is that it's less than 62%. Now, other problems might say more than you'd use a greater than sign, or other problems might just say different. We just wonder if it's something different than you'd use a not equal to sign. All right, that's it for step one, pretty harmless. 
All right, step two is to check the conditions. Now, officially, I'm supposed to tell you to write three nice, really big sentences, but the AP exam is totally okay if you just kind of, you know, do some rough checking of the conditions. So it needs to be a random sample so we could avoid bias. So just random sample check. We need to make sure that our sample size is under 10% of the population so that we can assume independence. So we just have to say 325 is less than 10% of all children under the age of 10. Notice how I sprinkled in a little bit of context there. They do like that. And then finally, to use a normal distribution for our sampling distribution, we need to make sure that we have that large count or big enough condition met. And that is that we need to have 10 or more successes and failures based on that null hypothesis of 62%. So what they actually want you to do here for full credit is they want you to do this. They want you to show that you are taking your sample size, multiplying it by the null hypothesis 62%, and that you're getting a number greater than 10. Then you're taking your sample size, multiplying it by the opposite, the one minus the 0.62, that's the 0.38, and then you're also getting a number greater than 10. They actually say that you don't have to report the actual numbers. Now, it's nice to do that, but as long as you're showing that you're taking n times your um, null hypothesis proportion, again, what we thought to be true, 62%. Notice I'm not using my sample 48% here at all. They want to, you to use what we believe to be true, and that's the 62%. And both of those numbers need to be greater than or equal to 10, because I actually put a little equal signs there as well. And you got to write that, right? Don't just give the numbers, because that's not checking the condition. By putting greater than or equal to 10, for both of those, you have officially checked the condition. All right, now for step three, which is to me the fun part, and this is to actually get the test statistic and the z-score, or which is the z-score, your test statistic is the z-score, and the p-value. Now, officially, all you need is this formula. If you write down this formula, you are free to then allow, then to use your calculator, TID4 or NumWorks, to get your z-score and your p-value. Now, I'm of course gonna walk you through how to actually do it, but I wanna remind you, if you write down this formula, you do not need need to show your work. All right, so the form is, of course, taking your sample proportion minus that null hypothesis proportion, again, what we thought to be true, and dividing it by the standard deviation of our sampling distribution based on that null hypothesis being true. Do not use your P hat down there. We're not using standard error because we believe that the 62% is true, so we should be using it. So here's me showing my work. My sample was 0.48, that was my sample proportion, minus the null hypothesis proportion of 0.62, divided by the standard deviation based on that null hypothesis proportion being true. And I got a z-score of negative 5.1997. But again, you do not have to show that work. I just feel like I should be showing you where that work comes from. Then that's going to result in a p-value of 0 0.00000000978. Now you might be like, well, what is a p-value again? Well, a p-value is the probability of our sample proportion occurring or more extreme. So it's the probability that any other sample proportion comes back more extreme than ours. Now, ours was already on the low side. 48% is way less than 62%. And what we're saying is, what's the probability that a sample proportion comes back even lower? on the assumption that that null hypothesis is true, and that's how you get your p-value. But I want to mention to you one more time, this is super important because I'm about to show you how to use your calculator, is that as long as you show that formula for the z-score, how you're going to produce your test statistic, you are fully allowed to use your TID4 or NumWorks calculator to get your z-score and your p-value, report them just like I have here, no work shown, and you will still get full credit for that section of the um, FRQ. Now, what I want to show you right now is how I'm going to use my calculator to do all of this, and I'm going to show you how to use the NumWorks calculator because it's pretty sweet. All right, we're going to go down to the apps, and we're going to go to the inference app. There are two different um, apps within the inference app, tests and intervals. We're doing a test, so we're going to select right there at the top. It's literally written out exactly what we're teaching you, a one proportion Z test. You're next going to enter in your null hypothesis, so we're going to backspace and delete that, and we're going to type in uh, 0 0.62. That was our null hypothesis. Notice how it even writes it out, P equals 0.62. Then we're gonna to go to the alternative and notice how we could select less than, greater than, or not equal to, again, based on the problem. Our problem was interested in if the proportion has lessened. 
All right, now we're setting all that. Again, that's exactly what you're writing in step one. So pretty cool, it's all right there for you. All right, then we gotta go and enter in the number of successes. Again, it doesn't want p hat, it wants the number of successes in your sample. So this is where I'm gonna take my sample size. Notice I'm doing the work directly in here. I'm gonna multiply it by the 48%. So that's my n times my p hat. And this is gonna be how many kids in my sample said they drink a glass of milk. And what's cool about the numworks is it's going to round it to a whole number for you, and it needs to be a whole number. On a TID4, you can do the same thing, but it doesn't round it to a whole number. And if you don't change it to a whole number, you're you're going to get an error. All right, sample size is 325. And then your level of significance, you get to pick what they tell you. They told you in this problem 0.01. So I'm going to use an alpha level of 0.01. That's my rejection area. Go down and hit next. And boom, look at that. How awesome is that? There's the z-score you need, negative 5.1997. There's the p-value. Make sure that you move the decimal eight times to the left. Do not put scientific notation on the exam. And that's it, right? Those are the two things you need. So as long as you quickly use your calculator, you can get the z-score and the p-value you need, and you don't have to show any work at all. How cool is that? All right, now it's time for our conclusion. All right, we want to make sure we make a conclusion based on our p-value. So I like to think of two statements here. The first statement is comparing the p-value to my alpha level and then making a decision. Since my p-value 0.00000998 Seven, eight is less than 0.01, I will reject the null hypothesis. Our sample should not have happened. Our sample was a very, or our sample or more extreme, excuse me, was extremely unlikely to occur if the null was true. And remember as statisticians, we don't believe in these weird things. So when these weird things like this actually occur, it means that the null hypothesis is probably wrong. And that's why we're going to reject it. Now we want to come with our context. There is significant evidence that the proportion of children under the age of 10 that drink at least one glass of milk per day has lessened and is below 62%. So that's my nice conclusion I want to give in context. I will quickly show you back to the TI-80 or to the, uh, excuse me, the Numerx calculator real quick here. And once you get your Z-score p-value, there's another button here for next. And it actually shows you a model. And notice it shades. You can see it shades the alpha. That's your rejection zone. And that's that bottom one percent where we're going to reject an all hypothesis and notice that our p-value was so low you can't even see it remember our z-score is negative five so it's literally off the screen you can't even see how low it was again which gives us evidence that the alternative hypothesis is in fact true so again pretty cool there and again this is all explained on that reference sheet now let's really quickly, really quickly play the pretend game. I just want you to guys see what would happen if my p-value was greater than my significance level. So let's just pretend we did all the work correctly and we got a p-value of 0 0.0785. This is where I would say, wait a minute, that's greater, oh, I had a little typo there. That's greater than 0.01. This means I will fail to reject an all hypothesis. This means that my sample proportion or more extreme was not that weird on the assumption that the null hypothesis is true, which means that, well, I just simply do not have the evidence to say that the proportion of children under the age of 10 who drink at least one glass of milk per day has lessened. Notice how I'm not saying that the null is true. We never accept the null or say the null is true. We just, this sample was just, you know, based on this p-value, which again, it was just pretending, it's not the right one, but I just made it up so you can understand what would happen if we saw the opposite thing here. This would just be a p-value that says, hey, your sample is likely to occur. It's not enough evidence to say that the true population proportion is definitely less than 62%. Yes, it's lower, but it's not that low. It could just be because of natural variation that happens when you look at samples. But notice how I'm just a couple changes to that sentence when we fail to reject the null. There is no evidence. My sample simply does not provide evidence that the population proportion is lower. All right, that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it made a lot of sense in terms of how to take all the different parts and apply it. And again, if you do everything just like this on the AP exam, you'll get full credit, right? It's nice and simple. I hope you walked through all the steps. And again, how cool of what the Numeworks calculator do, can do for you. It's so simple. It's so intuitive. It's so pretty. And it literally lays out all the values you need in step three. That way your life is nice and simple.